皆さん、カートゥーンコネスワーフィータのもう一つスペシャルエピソードにようこそ。今日のトピックはアニメです。さあ、ここは皆さんの司会者がウバナード527とアルトラソニック級にいます。All righty.、Um, as a bonus, real quick, I wanted to give a big thank you to Sayoko Kun, who、uh, did the、uh, intro to our, our podcast here.、Uh, and by doing it in Japanese, which was super awesome, let me say, I really was impressed.、Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to take just a second, real quick,、um, to give you guys a bonus and、uh, just give、uh, Sayoko's.、Um, Uh, favorite animes, real quick. So, what was your most people, their, their gateway anime, if you will, was Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, or Pokemon? What was the first one for you? Well, technically, the first one was Pokemon.、Okay. But, I mean, when you're a kid, you don't really know that things aren't made just in America and that, you know, there are other countries and other worlds that do other things. So, I just figured、What? Pokemon. I know, it's shocking. <laughs> I know. So, I'm not going to count Pokemon only because I wasn't aware it was a cart、uh, anime, kind of like with Yu Gi Oh! I watched Yu Gi Oh! as a kid, but I don't really count it as my first anime because. I didn't know. I actually had introduced an anime with manga, with、okay. the comic books. I read Sailor Moon and a series called Tokyo Mew Mew about these magical girls who were infused with the DNA of endangered species. <laughs> and it's a great read. It's fun. I still. So it's like Sailor Moon meets Captain America, I mean, Captain Planet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sailor Moon meets Captain Planet, but the girls have like cat ears, like wolf ears, and they have wings because of birds.、Um, and after, so I got really interested in that. And so I was like, ooh, what is this weird anime manga thing? So the very first anime I ever watched, actually knowing it was an anime, was Inuyasha back when I was in middle school. And I was. Obsessed with it. I thought it was the coolest thing. Girl goes back in time to feudal Japan, has to fight demons with this weird demon with long white hair and dog ears. And it was really, really great. And so through that, I watch Yu Yu Hakusho. I'm noticing a trend. I like the more shonen, the more guy anime. Was it mostly on Toonami? Yeah.、Um, well, actually, it was mostly on Adult Swim.、Uh, okay. That's、All、where、right. anime was back in, back in the day, back、All、when、right. I was a kid. That's Where you could watch anime. So I think Yu Yu Hakusho was on Toonami, though,、okay. which is funny because they censored out all the blood, which is, if you ever watch it now, just watch the Japanese dub, there's so much blood. It's kind of it's, it's hilarious how much they edited so it out. So it's pretty much like bleach. There's all the blood that's Yeah,、around. pretty much like bleach. Yeah. <laughs>、um, and from there, my love just grew. I read a ton of manga and I discovered my favorite anime, Full Metal Alchemist. Oh. Yeah, then I haven't talked about that yet on this we, podcast. We did talk. Talk about that earlier.、Um, we were talking about how Vic Mignana is、oh, the Vic voice.、Mignana. I met him. He's a very nice guy. I met him too, and he actually emailed me on my birthday. Oh, I that's used awesome. To, I used to be a member of his fan club, Risenble Rangers, back <laughs> in high school, and my friend emailed him saying, Hey, it's my friend's. Sayako's birthday. I almost said my real name. Oh no.、Uh, will you send her an email saying, you know, happy birthday? And I was in the middle of my computer literacy class in high school and I checked my email. And there's an email saying from Big Mignon. I literally screamed. <laughs> Everyone looks at me like, what is your problem? And I'm just like, nothing. Oh, man.、Uh, I, I just recently I had seen.、Um, I didn't remember this Pokemon's name in the podcast, but now I remember it. It's Keldeo. Keldeo is the Pokemon. Oh, the unicorn. Right. Yeah. Well, he voices Keldeo in the Pokemon movie. No. Yes. And it's hilarious. That I have to watch the movie now just to see it be Keldeo. That was like Mignotta. <laughs> just、But、call does... him short and then he gets real angry. <laughs> shrimp. Who are you calling a bite sized shrimp? <laughs> yeah. So my, I adored Full Metal Alchemist. I thought it was the coolest thing. My friend actually. Actually, when I passed chemistry, because chemistry is the closest thing we have to alchemy, made me an honorary,、um, honorary state alchemist. She actually <laughs> drew me as an alchemist. I was the,、uh, what was I? The entropy alchemist, which, if you don't know what entropy is, it is the scientific measure of chaos in the world. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am chaos personified. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> 
Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just That's a little right. bit. Um, and again, from there, my love just spread. I went to conventions a lot. Fun fact, there was a picture of me in a Japanese textbook at a convention in cosplay. Awesome. It's, I look terrible. It's, it's kind of funny. Who were you um, cosplaying as? I was cosplaying as Shia from Pita 10. Okay. This is a very, very obscure manga about this <laughs> angel who comes to earth and uh, she's super cute. I can't remember her name. Um, and she ends up rooming with this guy and he's kind of had a hard knock life and he lives next door to a demon named Shia who I cosplayed as and they all become friends and life is happy dappy and all that. Okay. Love, love, joy, joy. Um, my love for anime took a peek. In college time, as we got, anime kind of takes a peek after your weeaboo stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the weeaboos. Oh, the weeaboos. <laughs> if you're weeaboo, it's okay. You may be in your weeaboo phase. It's okay. It's all right. You, we all have that phase. I went out of that phase. And then after college, all of a sudden, a couple years ago, I just kind of fell in love with it again. I, my, one of my best friends has loved anime all throughout. And she was like, Stacy, you should watch this anime. It's called Free. Have you talked about Free? I have not heard of oh, it. Oh, boy. No, okay. So Free is legitimately... Um, a, um, a service anime. Okay. But instead of, fan you service. know, fan service, yes. Okay. But instead of, like, with the girls, you know, shut off the giant boobs and the underwear, it's boys. Oh, okay. Swimming. Oh, all right. Legitimately, all right. the entire anime is about boys swimming. It's fan but it's, service. It's it, the whole epi- it, yes. the whole season, the whole show is fan they, service. They, they come out of the pool and they're, like, dripping with the, with the water and there's sunlight hitting them just <laughs> right. But it's really dramatic. All of a sudden, there'll be, like, dubstep breakdowns in the background. <laughs> So it's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's it's so funny. I would I recommend just watching it just to laugh because it, it's actually a really good anime. If you're persuade if you're more persuaded to like the males, it's got some great fan service. And you know what? It's hilarious because random dubstep breakdowns and one guy legitimately has pointed teeth like a shark for no reason. It's never explained. That's because it's good. That's because it's. So why it's not? Finished. His why sister not? doesn't, but he has these, <laughs> these really sharp pointy teeth, and it's just like why? It's never explained. And you're just like. Why are your why do you have shark teeth? Why? <laughs> why why why? And honestly throughout though I can say that my eternal love of anime has always been magical girls. <laughs> okay. I love the drama genre cuz I started with with two magical girl mangas with Sailor Moon and Tokyo Mew Mew. Right. And I love magical girls just because it's a cool concept of just these girls who can transform and they save the day. It's <laughs> kind of like a superhero, right, but right, right. it's aimed more towards young girls, which is great because especially in American media, there are not a lot of superheroes aimed for younger girls. No. So it's kind of fun for these girls that can read about how, you know, these girls can transform and fight evil. And sometimes they have cat ears and sometimes <laughs> they don't. Um, if you ever want to watch, though, a really, really sad magical girl anime, it's so sad. Um, Madoka Magica. It's kind of like the... Um, I think I've heard of this. It's actually on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Okay. So if you have a Netflix account, you can watch it. It's on Instant Watch. It's only about 12 episodes, I think. And it's really sad. It's more about the reality of being a magical girl and, mm-hmm. you know, having to give up your life because you don't have time for family or friends anymore. You're saving the world. And mm-hmm. it has a really, really dark twist. And it's really, really sad and heartbreaking. And I love to watch it. But afterwards, I have to, like, curl up in a little ball on my bed <laughs> and be like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, above all else, I, I know I'm rambling and I ramble a lot. That's okay. Um, Sailor Moon. All right. Sailor cool. Moon is my eternal love for life, especially with the new um, Sailor Moon Crystal, since the 20th <laughs> year anniversary of Sailor Moon was last year. How do you enjoy it? Do you do you like it? Do you like the... Um, the new the, Sailor Moon yeah, Crystal? Sailor Moon. I enjoy the new Sailor Moon Crystal for a lot of reasons, actually. I know a lot of people online aren't loving it because mm-hmm. they don't like the art style. There are quality mistakes that happen. There are quality mistakes in every single anime. It's going to happen. Yeah, it happens. It happens. <laughs> you can get a laugh out of it, but, you know, leave, you know they're drawing it hand by hand. They're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I don't love the new CGI transformation scenes. I think they look they look CGI. They don't look good. They look like bad CGI. I'm like, you could just draw it. It's really okay. <laughs> um, but I like that it's staying true to the story. Because I read the entire story when I was a child. I've read book to book. I'm actually collect, recollecting the books now because okay. they've re- released them in the past few years. I'm recollecting them. I only have three, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Right. Whenever the money, you know, whenever I actually afford them. And so it was more true to the story. The artwork is actually a little more closer to the original manga mm-hmm. than the cartoon. Mm-hmm. I do not like the '90s cartoons anime. I don't like the. I don't like the anime. I've tried watching it. And I'm just like, nope, I can't do this. I'll read the. I'll read the manga instead. 
So I enjoy the um, actual art style of it. Again, is it a lot of people complaining that it looks generic? Well, guess what? Sailor Moon started basically the big boom of of magical girls. So if it looks generic, that's because Sailor Moon started it all. So, yeah. and I like that the actual creator Nayako, Nayako. I lost her last name. I think it's Tatsuchi. Don't hate me if I got that wrong. I can't remember off the top of my head. She actually has a part. With this new, with, with Crystal, which she didn't have. She was shut out of the original anime. So I'm really happy that she has a say in her in her creation. It's her baby. Mm-hmm. I mean, this brought her to stardom. She should be able to have a chance to play with it. So I'm really happy that she has that chance. Right. Well, I, I know that um, I had just watched a new channel that I found called uh, Did You Know Anime? And I watched a, a Sailor Moon episode. And they said that, they, that um, they tried to do an Americanized version of it. And, um... I heard about that and that it failed miserably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which oh, doesn't yeah. surprise me because magical girls aren't a thing that America can probably understand as easily. Mm-hmm. Just because, again, they really sell to young girls in Japan. And while they may have the fan service shop for any, if any males are reading it, which is mm-hmm. unfortunate, but it happens. I understand you have to pander to different audiences. It's kind of like when they throw in a unnecessary romance story, like right. in the Hobbit movies, where <laughs> it was fine. Right. It didn't need it, but it and was pandering to... It was pandering to people. It was pandering so to people, right. which they have to do that to pander to everybody. So right. I completely understand. Is it the greatest? Not so much. No. Did I enjoy the love story in Hobbit? Yeah, I didn't mind it. All right. I didn't mind it. It was fine. I knew it wasn't in the original, but it was fine. I, I liked the female character. What was her name? Evangeline Lily's character. I don't remember her actual name. I enjoyed that character. I mm-hmm. liked that character a lot. Mm-hmm. The random love story between her and that one dwarf was kind of random, but hey. Wow. Anyway, what were we talking about? Uh, last question. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, we one of the things we talked about is um, if you could – like one of the things we talked about in the podcast was that um, I said that uh, if there was one character that I liked from anime – and I thought that could sum me up. It's Vash the Stampede because I'm a big Trigun <laughs> fan. I think I Vash the Stampede. I think Vash very sums me. Basically, does does me with a gun. I think <laughs> with a gun. Okay, you have a poster of you. Looking at him. Looking at him. I'm looking at him. I can see it. I can see it. So, uh, oh. who would you say that you were close to? Personifies me. Personifies you. It, oh. it could be. It could be from your favorite anime. It doesn't have to be That's from so like hard. just any random ones. Okay. Okay, at the top of my head, right? And you're really throwing me on the spot here. <laughs> at the top of my head, no, I don't know. It's so hard. Okay, <laughs> at the very, 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 very top of my head, when we, when, when we, Winry Rockbell oh, from, from Full, Full Metal, Metal Alchemist. Alchemist. Yeah, because I think we share a lot of traits. First of all, we're blonde. Hello. <laughs> um. Second of all, she's very passionate mm-hmm. about her craft. And if you get me going on certain topics, I can be extremely passionate. <laughs> Honestly, I can talk about anime for an hour. I can talk about a whole bunch of things for an hour and a half. Josh knows he's got me rambling before. That's right. That's <laughs> That's right. why we wanted you on the podcast. That's well, I, not if we want to keep it short. Um, oh, what else? We Once we fall in love, we fall in love hardcore. Um, we're just set for life. and But we also play a little hard to get because why not? Play a little hard to get. Make, you know. Um, no, I'm not Winry. What am I saying? I don't know how to get. I don't know. This is hard. It's hard. That's that's all right. Uh, it's okay. Okay, so I would think actually okay. When I'm, I'm I'm a mix. Okay. Between Winry and Rock Bell, because again, I we are super passionate. We're both blonde. <laughs> and I like that you did the whole shampoo. Like yeah, you didn't see it. I did a whole hair flip. Although I have short hair, so hair flips don't really work. But that's okay. <laughs> Sailor Venus, Monaco Aiko from Sailor Moon, because also we're blonde. Another <laughs> shampoo commercial. Ah, sparkle sound effect. Um, she is very lighthearted and bubbly and hyper, which is me, if you don't know. But if you can't tell already, I'm pretty bouncy at all times. And But she's, again, she can be serious when she has to be. She is the leader of the Sailor Scouts, at least of the inner Sailor Scouts. That's a whole <laughs> politics of inner and outer. Whole politics. There's politics in Sailor Moon? There, you don't even the know, heck? man. There is such politics in Sailor Moon. You think I'm joking. That's the funny bit. You think I'm joking. I'm Hopefully not. it's not Star Wars politics. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't sit around for an hour watching people in the Galactic Senate being like... <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> I was me trying to snore, probably didn't sound like that's it, but that's okay. Um, but she's, again, so she can be very serious when she has to be, you know? Again, she's the leader of the Scouts, of the Inner Scouts, not the Outer Scouts. Again, politics all around. 
Don't get us. We'll go, we'll go on that tangent all over again. <laughs> and she has a cat. Uh, and I'm like the supreme cat lady. So, <laughs> bam. I, I would say I'm Winry. And if Winry and Sailor Venus could get together and have a love child, it's me. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, well, that, I think that's about it for our interview. Um, anything else you want to say before we go? No, I guess not. No, I don't. <laughs> you can't put me on the spot. I'm sorry. I'm putting you on the spot today. That's all right, though. In the name of the moon, I shall punish you. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Ubernote 527 uh, If you enjoyed this jolly banter and uh, just really nilly things that just happened, then please go to iTunes and give us a review. Five stars or more would be wonderful. Whatever or however you do that, I am sure you can. Anyways, if you like this silliness, then please go to the Arcade Archives website, arcadearchives.wordpress.com, and see all the jolly, wonderful, crazy people that are on there as well. You can also follow us at facebook.com slash Tales from the Game Grid. Or follow us on Twitter at Tales FT Game Grid. Thank you so ever so much for joining us here on the Cartoon Connoisseur Theatre Podcast. And now I am going to eat a large meal. Good night. Thank you for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave comments below. If you would like more, please go to thearcadearchives.com or zowiekerpowie.com. Thank you so much once again for joining us for this Arcade Archives Network video, and don't forget to keep playing like it's 1981. Message from Headquarters. This is a Rebellion production and is part of the Arcade Archives Network. That is all.